Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Special one for you today, because we have found ourselves in Inglewood, California, at a very specific location to work on a very specific someone's car. And that very specific someone is Nolan from Donut Media. Hello, I'm Nolan from Donut Media. <laughs> So like I mentioned, Mook and I have traveled all the way out to California to hang out with Nolan and see if we can get his 52 Chrysler Imperial back on the road. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see, man. <laughs> Nolan, give us a walk around. What are we looking at? All right, yeah, like you said, this is a 1952 Chrysler Imperial, one of the most uh, technologically advanced cars of its time. But now it's nearly 70 years old. I bought this car last year originally had it parked over at James Pumphrey's house in his side yard. I was working on it there uh, and then I had to bring it over to the office and now uh, because of other productions here at Donut we need to clear this parking space for more project cars on the channel so uh, my bosses have given me a deadline to get this thing out of the parking lot and seeing as how I don't have a garage at my house I'm a I'm panicking. You know, it's classic procrastinator behavior that now that I have a, a impending deadline, that's when I decide to kick it into high gear. So I appreciate you coming out because uh, otherwise I'd be kind of screwed. So hey, absolutely, yeah. man. I mean, we only perform best when we're out of time <laughs> and on a deadline. True, so man. I bought this car because of the very lovely patina um, it is present beautiful. on the car. There's lots of great rust all over it, and but not not structurally. It's a since it's a California car. All the structural, uh, the frame and everything, all the sheet metal hasn't been chewed through at all. Yeah, Body's in really great condition. Stupid solid underneath. I see you've already done some brake work to it, looks yes. like. Yes, yeah, I've, uh, I've refreshed the brakes, all new brake pads, cylinders, brake, a lot of new brake lines in there. Um, I have a new uh, uh, master cylinder that I need to install. Um, but let me show you the main reason I uh, bought this thing. Yes, it's got a 331 Firepower Hemi under the hood, and um, a couple months ago, or last year, for up to speed, uh, I researched and wrote the episode on uh, for up to speed Hemi, and doing the research on that, uh, and learning about this particular motor, I thought to myself, man, I've got to have a car with the 331 someday. Lo and behold, a few months later, I see this thing pop up on Craigslist, and it's a big old boat, which I like. It's got great patina and the 331. I knew I had to have it. Uh, I kind of overestimated my abilities, though, to get it running again. So that's why you're here. <laughs> I believe there's a video on that overestimation of a yes, boat. Yes, yes. I even made The importance a, uh, of understanding your own. Exactly. We'll link it right here. You guys can check it out. There's, yeah. there's a little more uh, cinematically explained story <laughs> of the car, too, if you want to see more yeah. of so, no one's adventures with it. Yeah, so finding myself completely out of my depth. Um, called up Kevin and uh, hopefully we can get this going today. You are a lot more optimistic than <laughs> I am, so I'm excited. Fuck Jets. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be our day right here. Yeah, I see we're uh, missing a few components. There is a carburetor. There is a carburetor. Is the intake bolted down? It is, uh, it it's got not. a few bolts in there. <laughs> I, yeah, like, yeah, there's a tool to hold it. <laughs> so another reason, one of the another reason I bought this is. Uh, it came with a lot of new parts and a lot of the hardware that we need to assemble this thing. It was like a project car package ready to go, basically. Well, Mook, what do you think? You dig into this thing? Yes. Let's do it. Okay, so step one, we have an unknown motor that was supposedly rebuilt? Yeah, so the previous owner before me uh, told me that before he bought it, the, the owners had rebuilt the bottom end, which as far as I can tell is true because I've taken the spark plugs out and the pistons were like super shiny, super clean. It looks like it's been resealed. Like the intake's been off for some reason and la da. We'll probably have to remember to actually do a break-in procedure when we get this going. But beyond that, we uh, we need to get a battery hooked up to this. There's no, you said there's no standard crank bolt in the center of the Right. Chronic. Potentially it spins. You were under the car last night kind yeah, of wiggling I, it. I could wiggle it a bit, so we should probably start there and make sure this thing does a rotation or everything's and you get some oil moving around, mm -hmm. uh, which means we need to hook a battery up to it for the first time ever. Yeah. Which means we need battery leads. We have a positive here, and this appears to be our starter lead. So I think we're going to start off with a trip to uh, a lot of 
right there. <laughs> this is oh, oh. It is. Oh. So, How does that happen? Well, well, I guess it just dries out and cracks. And... Yeah, this is, I'm noticing this on all of our wires are just bare, so. So that's not good. This is gonna be really fun. Hopefully the fire's not too big when we get the battery up. <laughs> but... So I think we need to worry about getting electricity to this car and see if we can get that starter motor to spin it over. All right, so it's been a little bit. We went to town to get some parts and started working on this thing. We are in a tight time schedule. We only got two days. So we'll film what we can. The majority of the, the reason we're here is to get this car running. I am currently pulling all the plugs out uh, just to make sure that we can spin this over, make sure there's no oil down in the cylinders to avoid any risk of potentially hydrolocking anything. Nolan is currently having a hell of a time. <laughs> he is wiring up our starter connections right now. We've got our new battery lead for the starter. We removed all the power to the car, so it's only powered to the starter because of how uh, busted up all these wires are. We do not want to cause a fire by anything shorting, so we're only powering the starter and then we'll hot wire the motor later. But he's gonna get that finished up, I'll get all these out, and we'll be ready to crank. All right, the first time this car's gonna see power. Oh! Well, we wired something wrong. There's yeah. the bad news, but oh, the good wait. news is, the good news is it cranked. <laughs> So I'm just gonna hook this up and we'll see if it cranks. Not very fast, but it does spin over. Man, how is that supposed to spin over with plugs in? <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know about that. Yeah, that. It's got 440 cranking amps on this battery and that was the most I could get at, the, in, at this size in a quick amount of time. Yeah, that was pretty slow. It'll be okay. <laughs> it cranks though, so that's the important part. All we need is that one pop and then it gets the rest of it going, right? Like yeah. the momentum. We'll just have to dial everything in perfect so then when we hit that key, it's running. Okay, so our uh, bed decks on the starter were sticking. We're gonna see if we can pop this thing apart and rebuild and clean that up quick and get her back in the car so it stops continuously cranking. All right, let's see if it worked. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Why does it do that? Why does it not disengage? It's like the it's like the teeth are just stuck and not letting the magnet pull it back, mm -hmm. or the spring pull it back. We might need a new starter because that Bendex is being a little goofy. Uh, I think the spring's probably gotten a little weak over time. And the teeth are probably engaging and just holding and not letting it slide back out. So what we can probably do is just get a Ford solenoid for a little bit until we, just, just to keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Move on to something else here, which should probably be, our ignition system was just totally missing from the car. So let's go ahead and get our find our distributor in the pile of boxes, find top dead center, line everything up, and sure. see if we can make this thing up spark. Sure. So full side note, uh, we are able to confirm that this motor was in fact rebuilt. I don't think you guys are able to see it. This is the way it be. But down there in that hole, there's a nice, beautiful, shiny piston. It says 0 .020 on it. So this motor has been bored 20,000 silver. Brand new pistons, the works. Mook found that. So good good eye there, Hecker. Thanks. Okay, I have removed the big ass generator with the power steering pump bolted to the back of it. Crazy design. To facilitate maintenance, so we can get in here a little bit better. I'm also gonna take this intake off and then we are going to drop a uh, distributor in here and set the work and get in spark. Back it up, Mook. I am on my very tippy toes. Your tippy toes? I'm not a short lady, but this car is up high. It is really high right now. Well, it's in California, so. Oh, don't you even dare. <laughs> <laughs> All right, taking this weird carburetor out of here. There we go. And now, the intake. And you might be saying, Kevin, why are you taking the intake off to do the distributor? Well, it's because there's no gaskets in here right now. It's just sitting here. You know, it's held down with like two bolts. So we gotta do gaskets, which means we gotta take it off anyway. Might as well do it, give us a little more room to get to the distributor. Oh my God, that's heavy. <laughs> Woo. Did you know it was blue? I did. I did. <laughs> So I've been working on cleaning up this oil filter canister, and I got it open. This is what we found inside. I've actually dumped most of it out already, that was just what was left, so. I'm gonna spend some time cleaning this up, because there's no way in hell we're putting that on a motor. 
yuck. I needed the largest wrench known to man to get the drain plug loose, so here we go. Let's see how much oil was in here. Oh! Oh! oh. Wow. That's really clean. Jeez. So there wasn't much? Wasn't much. Must have been just the storage amount. Yeah, I would say maybe a quart. Oh, oh. yeah. That's yeah. Or less. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. I'm wildly behind schedule now. I thought we'd have this car running by now. I have spent two and a half hours on this oil filter assembly because all up in here is full of valves and stuff and it's taking me that long to get them cleaned out and moving properly. And as you can see, I had to heat this one up and it's been a nightmare, but it's done. And the reason this is so important to get everything out is because this is the filter assembly and this controls most of your pressures and stuff and all your bypasses. So it's absolutely crucial that everything right here is fully functional so that we have oil pressure when we go to fire this engine up. Next step is going to be get new O-rings for right here, get the sucker back on the car, and then start priming that oil pump finally. All right, did another parts run into town. Got some food. It's now Saturday evening of our two-day adventure here. Uh, I am currently rigging up something. We're missing a band clamp right here. So I'm rigging up something to act as a band clamp and hold this all together. And I'm gonna bolt this on and we're finally ready to prime this motor. A lot has happened off camera today. Nolan's currently straightened out the oil fill tube because we went down and got ourselves a nice Oh, look shiny. at that, look oh. at that. Mint. It's on there. Yes. Fire it up, let's go for a Let's rip. go. <laughs> all right, so we went to put our oil thing on finally and realized that it, uh, I need to go get hardware for it. So we decided let's make sure we have enough bolts for the intake while we're at the hardware store and they're still open. And then Mook pointed out, hey, we should probably clean up the threads for the intake. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking a tap and running them all the way down with a little bit of oil in it and running them all the way back out because this engine's been sitting for we don't know how long and we need a proper torque value on those intake bolts. So we're gonna make sure our threads are not full of shit screwing up that torque value. Get this done, get some hardware, finally prime this engine. Oh, side note on that. Um, so the reasons as to why this motor was rebuilt. Looking around, I see oil all over everything. So I think this thing was probably a higher mileage motor. Um, Nolan, what's the odometer say, like 24,000? Yeah, yeah, 24. So probably 124,000 miles on a 50s car. Yeah, no, that, that motor was joke. <laughs> They probably didn't do enough oil changes, judging by what we saw inside that uh, oil filter housing, which hadn't been cleaned since they rebuilt the motor, but they never got around to all the accessories. They were still cleaning up, like the fuel pump's still dirty, and that's still dirty, and the generator's still dirty. So I think that they got a little lackluster on oil and filter changes, and the motor uh, lost oil pressure because that filter housing was plugged. It was like, I had to heat it up, and soak it in PB, and it, I spent two hours bashing on that thing to get all the valves to move again. Now it's good to go, but it would have been really bad had we just tried to run that. That would have been rebuild the motor again. <laughs> catastrophic. Yeah, catastrophic. So moral of the story there, if I had a guess, this thing lost oil pressure due to lack of maintenance and ate itself, which is kind of what you would expect at 124,000 miles. So that's... Honestly impressive to made it that far. And now we're left with a fully rebuilt 331 Hemi that's never ran. Great detective work. <laughs> detective digs. Detective digs. <laughs> Our oil filter thingy is finally on and functional. Nolan is going to dump assumed six quarts of oil into the motor. Into the assumed filler thing right here. Right. Which I think <laughs> into the assumed 331 Hemi. I'm going to bolt the old fuel pump on so we don't have a hole in the side of the block. I'm going to hook up an oil pressure gauge and spin her up and get some oil moving around. Whee. Now, I can't do a fancy high up oil fill, alright? I, mean, I use I use a funnel, I just want to keep things clean, okay? Mm. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, I said. <laughs> Look how dirty this motor was internally. Uh, and this is way out on the side. That's like, not good. This thing definitely died of high mileage and oil starvation. 
and the filter not being changed, which we've discovered why now. Yeah. Well, it's way it's back, way back there, there, dude. And really hard to get to and really hard to get the cap off. So, like, I can't blame them for not wanting to change that filter. And good luck. <laughs> I won't be here for that. <laughs> what you doing there, Hacker? Clean a fuel pump. <laughs> Getting greasy. <laughs> Surprisingly, that still works, so we're going to clean it up and put it back on the car. Okay, so we've got an oil pressure gauge over there. We've got a drill with a big flat blade on the end. Uh, and it's all taped together so nothing can fall out <laughs> into the motor. I'm going to figure out which way this needs to spin. And I'm going to reach in there and prime this motor and watch for pressure. And then hold that pressure for a while so we can get oil to all parts of the motor. We've got fresh oil. We've got a big empty filter, so it's going to have to spin for a little while. But we should be good to go. Unlike those guys with their Subaru. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. It's, it's a race. Who's going to run first without yeah. screaming? <laughs> so there's a gear on the top of the drive shaft here instead of it being on the bottom of the distributor. I didn't see that one coming. I don't know if I can do this. It's time to research some things. All right, we got our drive shaft out for the pump there. So now I can extend this the rest of the way down in there and prime La Pompo. I've been in California for like, you know, 24 hours and trying to speak Spanish already. I don't know a lot about this place. Gas prices are really high. They are. I might get stabbed everywhere I go. That's uh, not necessarily true. <laughs> Being from Iowa, that's what it <laughs> looks like though. Yeah. Oh, and there's planes. So in my infinite wisdom, I looked at this side, I guess, and said, we can drive that with a drill. And then realized later that uh, you can't drive the opposite of that with a drill, because it's a, a stud instead of an indent. So we need some kind of long rod that we can cut a hole or a notch in the end of and use to prime this motor. There happens to be this poor shopping cart sitting here, so it's got rods on it. Thanks, guys. Why am I cutting this shopping cart? Shopping no one drug me to California to fix a shopping cart? <laughs> <laughs> a little bendy, but I never heard you one. Get this mocked up, put her in there, and get back to work. All right, so here it is. We've made a shaft drive out of a piece of shopping cart, a bolt, and a little bit of work with the old death wheel. And if we drop that sucker down in there, it engages. Turns the pump. Yes. We're gonna hook the drill up and see if we can prime this motor. Alright, here we go. I think I'm still engaged. Yep, still engaged. It just got easier. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 it's climbing! It's climbing! What was that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know what? Might be our... Seal? Uh, is there a leak down there? Uh, on the filter thing? On the filter thing. It sounded like it was up here. Yeah, so... I can pump it up here. Yeah, okay. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, stop, 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 stop. Some fresh oil. On well, we got oil pressure. It's the good news here. You know? That is a good. That is good news. <laughs> I'll get you a rag. Oh. Kevin, quit hacking around. <laughs> so, since our zip ties aren't holding that cap on, we're gonna try some good old permanent clamps. Okay, that's on there. That should. Uh, hmm, maybe a little more. Yeah, a little more juice. A little more. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna keep at this for a bit. We'll be back when it's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got our vice grips on over there. That might be worth displaying. Figure that ought to do it. Probably not. Only one way to find out. All right, pressure's building. Uh -huh. Jesus. Did it 
have ice cream pop on? Yeah. So. so it will hold to about 60 PSI. <laughs> I was worried about that. Holy shit, that could have... I'm glad I climbed into the engine bay for that. <laughs> My ass in the air. It is Sunday morning. We found ourselves a band clamp that's close. Uh, Maybe. Uh, is it? No, it's way off. What? This is definitely not four and a half. At this point, do we just cry? Yes. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> I've got the fuel pump hooked up. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> is it that bad? Yeah, that's way off. Oh no. I've got the fuel pump hooked up. Our engine's sealed. We still need to figure out something to get that fuel filter cap stay on and then we can finally put some pressure in this motor and see if it runs. Okay. All right, well, here's our solution for the moment. <laughs> we have a gear puller with a piece of aluminum in there to keep it from piercing the cap, holding the, uh, the everything together, so see that yeah it's probably best if they can't to be fair <laughs> but <laughs> let's get the drill yeah let's see what happens and see if we can build some oil pressure and not blow everything up this time i'm gonna stand on the other side of the, <laughs> the car this time yeah. That's good. We made it all the way up to the bypass and nothing exploded. The engine holds oil at least to an idle now. So with the sketchiest, <laughs> sketchiest clamping ever seen. So, so now we finally, the next day, have oil pressure through the motor and everything's holding. What a relief. So we can go ahead and put our uh, distributor gear back in. Great. Uh, try to get that lined up with the pump. Put our distributor in. Fight through the completely absent ignition system we haven't even touched yet. And then finally get this thing to have spark. Put some plugs in it, put wires in it, put the intake on it, put a carb on it. Light it up. Bob's your uncle. All right. Oh yeah, look at all the oil all over it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. That means she's oiling out the end of the camshaft. Okay. All right, to further facilitate maintenance and set our top to center, we're going to remove this valve cover. I'm also doing this because there's a bit of dirt in there. We're going to see how bad it is and if we need to remove them both to clean them. Come on. Look at that valve train. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty dirty right here. Yeah, they put like... Maybe it was ran, actually, just a little bit. There's a little bit of carbon in there and a little bit of oil. Now we can reach our spark plug hole and roll everything over nice and slow by hand, feel for compression, and see all of our valves, which I thought would have been easier with the big holes in the covers, but they're so damn far apart. <laughs> Being literally like seven inches apart, I couldn't see them. All right, so at this point, we looked at our valve train, determined that watch the intake valve go open closed and then stopped as our piston began traveling up, which will be our compression stroke, at which point the top of the compression stroke we need to have a spark. I have removed an inspection cover right here and I'm using a screwdriver to turn the engine over very slowly since there's no crank bolt. And Nolan is watching the piston since you can see him really easy in this engine. And he is going to see when it is at the top point. We're probably gonna go past the top point and then back and forth until we kind of like mellow that out to be at the top. And then we'll make a mark on our harmonic balancer, install our distributor and move forward. Still coming up. Yep, still coming. Okay. Okay. I think we're going back down again. I'm gonna get you a screwdriver so you can feel it. Okay. And then we'll we'll be able to nail it within That's... like two degrees. So no one's gonna feel as I move that piston up and down. He, he can see it, but being a tiny little hole far away, it's kind of hard to get really precise. But the human body's much better at feeling things, has minute movements than visually seeing them. So I'm gonna give him a screwdriver, and he's gonna be able to tell me right when that dwell point of the crank is that that piston wrist pin is rotating from up to down. And we can find that dwell 
and it should actually be easier for me to move the motors a little bit at that point because like two or three or whatever the pistons are at dwell and they're not moving so I'm doing half the work then we'll make a mark on the harmonic like I said and we'll be good to go I think it's coming down I believe all right we'll go back we're within like three teeth now so yeah up up barely yep yeah, back down okay so I'm gonna estimate about halfway between those points yeah I think right about yeah, I think we're like at the, I'm seeing the, the, the pulley turn, but I'm not feeling much. Perfect. Yeah. So we want to be right about there. I'm going to get I feel an easy spot right there, so that feels right to me. Okay. Oh, dude, there's timing marks here. Oh, yeah. We nailed it. They're just too rusty to see. Oh, yeah, look at them all. There they be. Oh, so here's... Uh, 10 degrees after, there's 10 degrees before, it is sitting exactly on zero degrees right now. Dude, we nailed it. Hell yeah. Nolan cleaned this up, it's looking good. We're gonna drop it in the motor, make sure our pump shaft lines up. We got our shopping cart drive shaft to uh, help align that so everything goes into place. And then we're ready for the distributor. All right, I just went to drop the uh, drive shaft for the pump in and it went right in the place. I think it might have literally just been straight in. We're gonna crank the motor and see if it worked. Oh, I see oil moving. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. I think oh. I literally got it first try. All right, I'm gonna distribute her and plop that in there too. I don't know how the hell this thing's gonna crank with plugs in it if it's cranking that slow uh, already. I have no idea. Do we need a stronger battery? Maybe, or seeing the fact that this is a six volt system and we have everything but the starter disconnected, the only thing it could harm, and it probably won't because it's a big electric motor, is the starter if we threw 12 volts at it, mm. so. So, turns out I actually didn't have that pump shaft aligned right. I had to pull that base bottom half back out. I was able to stick it into the distributor part where I could remove it in and out pretty easy. And then stick the shaft on in there and move things around and just play with it until I was able to get everything to fall all the way in down to the block and get the rotor to land pointing at number one. At this point, I've marked your cab number one for convenience when I'm not here, for Nolan's sake. And we're ready to bolt everything in and put plug wires on this motor. Let's do it. So, as you can see, this giant mess is currently our ignition system, and every wire over here is just obliterated. I'm going to take the coil off. There we go. And take the condenser and build ourselves our own ignition system. Okay, so we need to test if this coil is any good. I'm going to show you guys how to test a coil. This works for 6 volt, 12 volt, all of them. Pretty simple. You hook up. A spark plug lead, you hook up a wire to the positive and a wire to the negative. You take your wire to the positive and you hook it to a positive battery source. You take your wire to the negative and you brush it against the negative. I don't know if this one connected. There we go. Now you're going to take this guy and put him near something that will make a ground. And when you brush this wire on the negative, you'll see very, very faintly on this on this uh, coil. But there is spark. There we go, that's a little better. It's very weak. I mean very weak. But there is spark coming out of that wire. So, albeit weak, we do have an operable coil. I'm gonna put our condenser on the negative side, find a mount for everything, hook everything up. I think my mount's actually on the intake, so it might be time to throw our intake on as well. I'm a little scared for my fingers. Yep. We'll go yeah. the back first. All right, fingers out. Uh, it's yeah, definitely we, not we lined up. We wildly missed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we got hardware. That's good. Nice. All right. Good. I can't see these, so you'll have to tell this me where I've got to go. Way. Forward. Okay, our intake is aligned. Well, now we get our lock washes and everything to permanently bolt this down. And then redo those alignment bolts we just dropped in. And we'll have an intake. 
So, starting in the middle, we're going to work in a spiral pattern leading outwards. Just making our way towards the edges of the intake in about mm, five pound increments. So, I'm going to take these so they all feel about the same and move on to the next ones. And bump her up to about 10 pounds, which will start beeping. And slowly work this intake into place. And once we hit 25 to 30, we'll be at full torque and ready to move on to get a carburetor and spark plug wires and everything else and whatnot. All right, so a little bit of time has passed. I have made ourselves an ignition system. Still working on the old starting thing. We gotta go get a, we're gonna use a Ford starter solenoid. But, I turn the motor over. We have spark. We're gonna throw some plugs in this, put our spark plug wires on, and throw a little carb cleaner down the intake, see if this will make a little noise, and then go on our last O'Reilly's run. Put our wires on, I'm gonna hit her with some brake clean, see what happens. Nolan, are you ready? Uh, I'm keeping my expectations chilling we just we don't even have a carburetor on there I, w I just want to hear something you know? yeah I'm just looking for a pop yeah this is not the most flammable liquid here we go oh I wondered about that oh it doesn't even want to crank it, it can't even crank with the plugs in we do have a 12 volt booster pack and nothing besides the starters would go so okay what? That just ran out of battery. Well, that was dramatic and nothing really happened. <laughs> Did this thing just go dead or something? Do we have a 12 volt battery sitting around? We might. There's a Ranger over there. There it is. <laughs> Alright, stole the battery out of Zach's Ranger. Thank you, Zach, whoever you are. Oh! That seemed promising. I gotta like put it on slow so it doesn't crank right away because that starter's got a bad bindex. We're, we're gonna work on that when we get parts. Are you ready? I'm ready. Round three. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. Our timing's like a mile and a half off for some reason. Uh, that's getting more. Yeah, that'll go oh, out. Something's just on fire in the exhaust. That one's pumped. <laughs> he was so excited, that was awesome. Gotta be safe. Gotta be safe. Let's get a couple water bottles as well. That'll be our first line of defense, because fire extinguishers make a big mess, fun fact. If you need to use them, use them. Don't hesitate, but I usually keep a few of these around first. Or actually, I usually have a gallon, a plastic gallon of water that I can just boosh and break open and flood everything. All right, we put our carburetor on because if that wasn't a timing issue, it could have been uh, just wildly lean. So we're going to choke it down, plus this way it won't, you know, do like a million RPM right away. If it does, fire. That ran. That ran on its own. A little bit. Oh my god. <laughs> Pretty beefy sounding motor. It does. That sounds great. <laughs> yes, dude. Let's go down to O'Reilly's, get the last few things we need, throw a condenser, uh, everything we need to run an actual starting system, blah, 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 and then come back and try this again. Please heck off. Thank you. Bye. I don't think that's how those things work, maybe. 
Moot, get, get back here. Dang it, Moot, you come back. You come back to this instant, you little heck ass. All right, a couple fixes here or there. And now the appropriate fuel. That other stuff didn't burn very well. Something's got to be incorrect because this should be running by now. Let's double check our firing order. Yeah. We're going to double check a few things. We'll be back. All right. We've got a new electrical system. We used a 70s Ford uh, starter solenoid to bypass all this crap and do something we can control so the starter is going to turn off by us cutting power since the spring inside is a little weak. No one set up a fuel system. We've got this guy loose oh. right now. Oh, I was like. <laughs> I came back and loosened this so we can watch for fuel right here. That's what we're going to do first. Yep, and then we'll tighten this down and then fill our carb with fuel and see if we can get this thing to run. It's still probably got some weird ignition timing issues thing going on, but we'll get to that There's when we get to that. some old timer in the comments who knows exactly what's wrong right now. He's like, you dumb whippersnappers. When are they ever going to learn? <laughs> New, new starter is uh, going to be ordered this evening. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. oh sorry. All right. It's pumping. Yep, we got fuel. So we'll tighten oh, that yeah. down, crank it to fill up our bowls, and see if our um, accelerator pump and stuff works. I was like, what? what's all that fuel? Well, that's just lubing everything yeah. up, you know. I don't want anything to rust. No, that's good. <laughs> The accelerator pump doesn't work great, but you can see it kind of throwing fuel around. Here we go again. It's also rich as hell for some reason. <laughs> well, I have a carb rebuild kit. It probably needs it. But you have a motor that runs. We do, dude. It's the, the fundamentals are there. Oh my It'll God. spin over on its own. The dwell's probably a little goofy being the dual points thing. I never mess with that. The timing's definitely goofy. Uh, there's like, we could spend another few days on it dialing it in. Yeah. But I know, I wish you were here for a week instead of I know. two days. <laughs> me too. Wanna to do it again? Yeah, let me get my phone this time. Okay. <laughs> my dad just texted me, he's like, well, uh, all right.
I call that a, I call that a didle. <laughs> no way, man. Look at all that smoke coming Dude. out. So loud. I mean, that's basically an open header right oh, there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so loud up here. <laughs> it's like deafening trying to be next yeah, to that. Yeah, right right being at the drag strip. Yeah, it feels like I'm revving a top fuel heavy. <laughs> I'm going to try to fire it. I, I could watch the pressure. Yeah, if you want to hit the key, actually, or hit the button and fire it up. <laughs> It was getting there. Wow. What did to get to? Held at 50. My wow. ears are yeah. ringing. Yeah. <laughs> I did figure out we can make it idle. It's the, uh, Distributor's so loose that it's just turning back. So oh. we set the timing. This son of a bitch will sit here and run. I don't want to run it too much more since we don't have a cooling system. So we'll uh, get our timing set and call her good. Found some vacuum caps and a couple things we probably should have plugged off. Set the timing. Let's see how it does now. I tell you what, the look on that man's face right there, he was revving his motor for the first time in over a year, made my day. And I can only imagine that's what a lot of the people watching this stuff that take our advice and learn from our videos and do this on their own, I can only imagine that's what's happening across the country. And that is the driving force that keeps us going every day. We love hearing about the revivals you guys do, and we love helping friends of ours and people all across the country put old cars back on the road. And that is what we are all about here at the Junkyard Diggs family. Dude, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mook. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nolan, for yes. having us out. This was an absolute blast. My first time in California. We, I it, hope you enjoyed I'd it. I'd say it went pretty damn yeah. well for a first trip. I think so, man. If you guys want to see more about this car, check out Donut Media, subscribe, watch what these guys do. They have some excellent content here on YouTube. Hey, if you're a Donut Media fan who's brand new to Kevin's channel, uh, give him a Mo Pow baby in the comments. Let him know <laughs> that that's where you found him from. Yeah. This has been Hell really yeah. great, man. I'm like, I'm just so thankful for you guys to come out here. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I, I am, I don't, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to outro this video. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. Subscribe to Junkyard Mook and all of our friends. So we'll see you right here next time on Junkyard Digs. Peace. Want to do it again? Yeah, sure.